How much right. pizza do we have on our beards? That's yeah. a pre-check. Are we good? No, you're, 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 you're both. Okay. Trust me, I would have caught that one. Yeah. <laughs> He's used to looking at that for me. <laughs> Chris Duffin at Elite Performance Center, sitting down with Joe Daniels of Swing This Kettlebell. And uh, we're doing a little post-workout uh, Q&A, uh, sum up the day, and also answer a few questions that popped up on uh, Instagram while we were training. So uh, first, let's uh, fill me in a little bit on this uh, float tank. All right, so um, my bodybuilding career morphed into a movement bettering career. Um, why I came to talk to you, I like you like more better movement. and uh, so. And it got really intense, lots of kettlebell sport and things like that. Um, so a lot of sympathetic nervous activation, you know, highly tuned into movement, endurance, uh, training outside, cross training. So sympathetic nervous system. And I've always researched on how to calm down and how to get out of that uh, intense state that our crazy eyes are always wandering into right you can't sleep with crazy eyes you know, right uh, but the thing you is like have some downtime. you got to have some downtime so I, I found in magnesium magnesium helped so I was doing transdermal magnesium like forearms elbows and stuff like that um, a guy Mike Mahler had turned me on to that and big into the kettlebell world you know um, so hormone optimization so I got into magnesium and I started doing that and I realized it's really helping me with sleep and helping with recuperation balancing of that stuff. Um, so anyway, I started flotation tank therapy. So I was like, whoa, this sounds really interesting. It sounds crazy. So anyway, uh, heard about it for a couple years. There was nothing in Cincinnati area about six or seven years ago. Then it started popping up and I finally got the chance to try some at the beginning of the year, so about eight months or so ago. And it has totally changed everything that I've done, it's especially like training and all that and life, you know, in general that we talked about previously, um, you know, I like to think, think of what I do as training for life, mm -hmm. not just for the sport, but we have the life's outside of the gym. Um, so that helps me calm down. But anyway, basically what flotation therapy is, it almost forces a person into the opposite of the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system, which is, which helps govern um, respiratory um, resting heart rate and uh, blood pressure and digestion you know as we're trying to gain muscle and we're trying to gain strength we need to eat food right you've been to the point where you've done those marches and you can't eat right away you know we how my heart rate was at 180 for how well, 10 minutes or something we, we yeah, have so, a picture so, of it so for those that uh, aren't aware uh, we uh, we'll I put, still feel uh, it. I put I put Joe through a, a a bit of a marching session to see if we could uh, stimulate a little puking or something mm -hmm. like that. But uh, is rather interesting and does relate to this conversation quite a bit because he hooked up his uh, uh, heart rate monitor, and I mean it was just elevated for like fifteen minutes afterwards. Even five minutes, it was he was like way he up, was way up, still on there working mm -hmm. um, where and he was like failing and he was still his heart rate was elevated at that level mm -hmm. and both of us have played around with uh, heart rate variability uh, mm -hmm. training Joe currently does um, I manage uh, auto regulation uh, through uh, speed monitoring yep. and bars that's what I use with all my online clients what I use on myself uh, here in the gym so we do a lot of this um, managing that sympathetic versus parasympathetic more phases. feedback better uh, we have yep. more feedback that we're, we're so strong mentally and you know, not just us, but a lot of people are so strong, they're gonna run through that pain, or they're gonna run through, like, more training's better, when it's not necessarily always better. Um, you're only gonna be as good as you, what, as you can recover from, right? Yep. That so helps. This, is, this is another advanced it's recovery a, technique? It's a way that you can, you can just really, really do nothing except float in a tank full of salt water. It's magnesium salt, so it's Epsom salt, basically. Everybody's been in an Epsom salt bath at one time. You know, oh, yeah. Grandmother's, eh, get an Epsom salt bath, whatever. Drink whiskey, get an Epsom salt bath. <laughs> but anyway, so it's, it's a thou around 1,000 pounds of salt in 200 gallons of water or whatever the tank is. It's about a 4 by 8 tank. They're coming out with different types now, open, closed, all sorts of different stuff. Um, but anyway, so you literally lay in there. You're submerged on your back and the water comes up past your ears and you are floating effortlessly. So what happens is when you're having restricted environmental stimulation, you walk into your gym and it's great, it's, you know, we got metal playing, we got heavy classical, whatever, getting wild in there and lifting heavy weights. Well, that's the opposite. We need to do the 
opposite to help balance us out and help us recuperate, help us sleep, right. help us regenerate tissue, and uh, basically cellular health and brain health, nervous system health. Because if you're always, how can you get your muscles to fire, right, that we've talked about a lot, if they're constantly being challenged all the time without a rest yeah. and recuperation? Um, so that helps. It's just very, very, so, very interesting. So speaking of, you know, you know, getting into that parasympathetic state and, uh, you know, that downward phase comes into our first question, or actually comment. Okay. Comes into our first question or comment on uh, the Instagram, which was, uh, it's only right to drink some Dan Jack Daniels and, and deadlift with Joe. Um, we didn't do any deadlifting, although we did uh, some, some pretty brutal stuff today. But uh, no, no, Jack Daniels, actually, uh, <laughs> where we're going with the Willet, uh, much, much better choice. So um, post-workout, getting a little cheers, a little pre-interview on again. Thank All right, you. let's commence with the questions. <laughs> um, we've got a couple good ones, so we'll probably just have a couple of them. Uh, spend a little bit of time on them and uh, wrap that up. So, what is the best kettlebell movement for power in relation to squats and deads? Okay, so it, I'm going to say it's a variation of swings. For someone that's beginning to it, just learning a proper hip hinge, activating the glute, and timing of torso contraction and stability. Right. Um, so for a beginner, just a regular two hand swing is going to be good. So now a person that's been doing that for a while, can we do some other thing? Can we do some outside of the hip, you know, close stance outside of the hip, double handled, you know, two kettlebell swings. That's going to help balance the lats down a little bit more. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of a, excuse me, a little bit of a progression. Um, so I'm really going to go with just regular swings. Okay. And like you said, the it's the top the, of the, the deadlift, the double swing. Uh, oh. So double swings, you could if you or if you pull sumo because there's somebody doing conventional, there's somebody doing doing sumo. Uh, it all affects is affected by your stance. So in you can do a double kettlebell between the leg in a wider stance mm. where you're going to get that external rotation. And great part about kettlebell swings is to keep the knees from falling in when people are doing some caving and squats. We're not gonna do that with kettlebell. Oh no! Because yeah. it'll hurt you. You'll be unhappy. <laughs> very, very unhappy. So, uh, so the wider stance, double kettlebell swing. Um, like I said, that's not something you want to start with. That's something you want to work with a, you know, an inexperienced, knowledgeable coach um, that can show you how to do that. Because otherwise, that can be, well, if you're just doing two fifty two pound bells, that's one hundred and six you're swinging right. with double. Yep. I'm not gonna disagree with you at all, Joe. So good approach. Uh, Next question, what changes would you make to a typical powerlifting program for someone who wants to remain very athletic? I still want to improve the big three, but I need athletic for sports. Okay, um, so sports, gonna be a lot of movement, a lot of change of direction stuff. So I think kettlebell is gonna be really good. Any, anything like that, possibly snatches, uh, where it's gonna be a change, um, because there's not too much in powerlifting that's a tension in one spot to another point of tension. So, like Olympic lifting, um, so say a clean, from the ground to a new position of reception of weight absorption. Uh, kettlebell, you can train that in, in clean, in snatch, uh, so it's going to be unilateral, uh, you're going to work a lot of stuff, so you're going to work out kinks, you're going to work out balances, or balancing your body. Um, if you can do, say, five with your right, and you can do two with your left, you can really see that there's a discrepancy there. So we can work on trying to balance that out. Um, Turkish get-ups, I love. Turkish get-ups. They're a slow exercise, but can you think, I don't know, do you do them? Have you done them? Uh, I've spent quite you a bit of time. Them? I spent quite a bit of time. That's uh, okay. how I first made a lot of progress on uh, my shoulder issues. Shoulder stability. Scapular, yeah, exactly. Yes, control. And then I, I moved to the shoulder rock for a training awesome. efficiency standpoint awesome. to, to basically do the same thing, but in a much faster fashion. Yes, exactly. So, um, so I'm the Turkish get-up done properly and cued properly. Right. Right. Is, is a very powerful tool. Right. So I'm going for that one. That's, even that's a slow, the combination's awesome. So we've used maces and I can't wait to use this and see what people think. Like, it's just going to be better. What are these weigh to start out with? The 10 they're, pounds? Uh, they're 8 pounds. 8 pounds? Yeah. Awesome. So we could have, so I got ladies or, you know, guys, Absolutely. people that have golfers. Golfers aren't need to be doing 20 pound mace swings right away. No. No. But something like this, if they're going to work on 
you know, start with eight pounds of mace. We have at our place is ten. So eight, then we can go to, you know, add a two and a half. Add a, you can add the little um, ounce plates if, if you need a to. Absolutely. Awesome. So that's going to be really good for us. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, big proponent of that. I actually use the uh, baby get-ups quite a bit. Uh, is a uh, developmental um, kinesiology approach to resetting issues. Which So the properly cued um, get-up can do a lot of the same thing with getting reprogramming, mm -hmm. basically, how the per person works. Because the, the get-up is a play on, basically, our learning process from how we learn to roll over, mm -hmm. get into and, and, and progress into the standing and walking positions. So, yep. It, yep, it's awesome. One of my favorite ways to, to cue someone that doesn't have much, um, I guess, experience in what we do is say, say it's a mother that's just had just big new training or something like that. Um, your kid fell asleep on you and you're laying on the ground. You fell asleep, how are you going to get up? It doesn't matter. You don't have to hold it over your head. It could be a Turkish get-up from the shoulder. I can overload my body with way more weight than I can stabilize my shoulder by holding a sandbag on my, instead of oh, extend it over my head, but um, I can hold a sandbag on my shoulder and, and get up. So people with shoulder injuries, you could work the same torso building, ex, like you can get the torso building proponent from the get-up without having to worry about the shoulder over the head. Um, so I think it's very similar. We'll have that progression. But like I said, the the mother, <laughs> the, just say, hey, yep. you got a baby, and you don't want to wake it up. <laughs> How are you going to stand up and then go? So yep. you can get some people to do that. It's pretty awesome. That's good. Well, uh, both of you, you and I are a little short on time, so we're going to wrap this up with one last question here. And that is, uh, what is the most effective kettlebell exercise for strengthening and stabilizing a subluxing shoulder? Hmm. What we just talked, what yep. I was talking about before, so, you can't handle the force. Yeah. And it overwhelms the muscle. But any of your pulling into this position is going to work the rotators, the supraspinatus, all that stuff that's going yep. to help stabilize that. So, ready to jump into it? Okay, yes. So, what I'm thinking is we possibly are going to do some lying shoulder rotations to work, um, the same as you might do with a cable or a band, certain things, but we can work on external rotation, internal rotations on the shoulder, build up the stabilizing um, rotator cuff muscles first. Um, you don't, the last thing you want to do is be throwing snatches over your head. I would highly recommend not doing anything like that. I would agree. Um, possible start of the Turkish get up on the ground. Basically engage, you know, engage the lats, engage all the rotator cuff muscles as much as you can to stabilize that shoulder joint first. And then instead of going to the full range of motion on the Turkish get up, maybe you come up a little bit and go back down. So we're, we're working into the motion. We're not doing the full motion right away. Um, so anything like the possible, the, the bottoms up possible holds, starting with a with a lighter weight, just to, to stabilize and work on balance. Um, because once you have that kettlebell, on the, you can hold it, and there's a lot of weight. But it's also externally rotating the shoulder. Um, so if you don't have the balance of internal external rotation. Um, I think that might be a bad thing. So maybe some of the bottoms up. Yeah. What about uh, just as you progress in the get up into like the uh, up into onto where you're posted onto and the then posted into the on. high hip position? Both of those practicing the internal and external yes. from those positions. This, okay. And I get to this point a lot when I'm working with people and they say I have a shoulder issue. Well, when you're doing when you show someone that exercise, the first thing they think of is the thing that can hurt them. They think the kettlebell above their head is the one that can really hurt them. It might be 26 pounds, 18 pounds, let's say it's two pounds, but the posted arm, how much weight are you holding up? Oh, yeah. You're holding up, uh, as, as you are extending that arm, the tricep, is most of your body from your hips up are now on that shoulder, and you are in an externally rotated position, in a position that you don't normally train. Um, so maybe we might try this landmine uh, the barbell, the landmine that we have, or what mm -hmm. do they call What do you guys call this? Uh, we call it landmine as well. Okay, yep. so the rotated. Maybe that press with just a bar, or even a short bar, or light, a half weight bar that you're holding up and you're working on that new external st side stabilizing position. Um, but nothing too heavy because you're in an end range position back here. Um, but that's going to get you used to building the strength for your posted up Turkish get up without having your whole body weight, especially if you're a big guy, you know, or yep. big lady. I can definitely feel that. Anytime I've got any instability in the shoulder, 
if I do a, a either a body weight get up or a Turkish get up, um, I can feel that You're instability shaking. on yep. the posted arm yes. really bad. There's so, way more weight there. So, well, we're going to wrap this up. But first, I just want to be clear: neither Joe or I are medical professionals, so we're not. Uh, don't construe that as medical advice. Find this a is doctor. Just our approach on how we would. Uh, how we ourselves would, uh, you know, integrate and make changes to our training uh, based on uh, based on that last question. So, mm -hmm. all I right. would definitely find. A, you know. If you'd like to support the production of further content and maximize your athletic performance, check out KabukiStrength.net. Our goal is to provide you with the tools and the methods to maximize your performance. There's constantly adding new products to our site, so please check it out. All that's left is for you to bring the attitude.